Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Today we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection, by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified, yet entered into glory, may we walk in the way of the cross, Find it is for us the way of the life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated to receive God's word. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. We'll read it responsibly by the whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sorrow. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my hopes are conceived. 
I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They flocked to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said in your mouth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine on my servants and in your blood on my eyes. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to greet the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring to me. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They said to them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following shouted, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went back into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
It was Passover. According to historians, there would have been thousands upon thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of pilgrims converging on the Holy City to celebrate the Exodus, to celebrate God liberating the people of Israel from an oppressive domination system in Egypt. It would have been exciting beyond belief. And in that setting, there were two grand entrances into the city of Jerusalem, both of them designed and planned to make a powerful statement. The first was Pilate coming from Caesarea Maritima, where he lived, and he would have traveled with his soldiers, with their horses, with drums and trumpets and spears and bows and swords. And the point of that entrance on that weekend was to say to this mob of celebrating Israelites, this is Caesar's world. Caesar is in charge here, so y'all better behave. He was from Southern Italy. <laughs> the second grand entrance was Jesus coming from the Mount of Olives, riding on a donkey. And in doing that, in doing that, he was mimicking the royal entrance by Solomon, the son of David, so long before, who rode into the holy city of Jerusalem on a mule, the royal mule, to signify his kingship. And also in doing that, he fulfilled the words of the prophet Zechariah who said when the Messiah comes, he will come from the Mount of Olives, riding on a donkey. And the symbolism of all of that, it was not lost. It was not lost on the people who saw him. They began to cut down palm branches. And quoting Psalm 118, they said, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. And when they said Hosanna, they weren't saying, it's great to see you. It wasn't celebratory. When they said Hosanna, they were saying, save us, help us, right now. Jesus' entry into the holy city made the proclamation that this is God's word, not Caesar's. And the crowd shouting their Hosannas were saying very clearly, Jesus is our king, not Caesar. Well, powerful statement. And then, as, as strong as that was, Jesus followed it up the next day with his moment in the temple when he tipped over the tables of the money changers and the people who were selling animals. And he shouted at them, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer for all people, but you have made it a den of thieves. Using words from Jeremiah and Isaiah, two of the big three prophets, what he was doing was giving a scolding, scathing rebuke to the priests, to the scribes, and the elders for failing to live up to their high call. Make no mistake about it. When we celebrate Palm Sunday, we are not simply celebrating a great parade. We are celebrating the day on which the battle for humanity began. In the days that followed, Jesus would experience twists and turns, betrayal, abuse. And through it all, through it all, the systems that dehumanize the systems that destroy the human spirit, the systems that led to suffering and death, were locked in battle with the kingdom of God and the future of humanity hung in the balance. In the week which we call Passion Week, in that last week of Jesus' life, the systems, the systems of power and control and oppression were on display for all to see. 
in the light of day, human selflessness, greed, hatred, violence, and economic oppression were there for everyone to see and to judge. But in that same week, just as surely as the light revealed the darkness of humanity, just as surely the light shined in that darkness to reveal the true nature of God. A God who, over the course of that week, came to the very center of human experience of suffering, of loss, of defeat, of death. And through it all, we see a God who loves us more than we could ever imagine. Ernest Gordon, in his book, Beyond the River Kwai, talked about his experience in a prison camp during the Second World War and the importance of the cross to him and to his fellow prisoners. And he said this, as we look at the cross, as we look at the cross, we can hear God whispering to our hearts, saying to us, you can do to me what you will. You can break my bones. You can bruise my body. You can drain my blood, but you cannot stop me from being who I am. I am the one who loves you and will never let you go. And so today, we meet on this Palm Sunday in a bruised and bruising world. We meet at a time when for the last 12 months, we have seen millions die and many, many more millions threatened by pandemic. We live in a time when it seems that Caesar is alive and well. And so today, today we join our voices with all those who have gone before us, saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, 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 save us today, help us today, for the love of God, save us from ourselves. Amen.
join me as we affirm our faith in the words of the same mind. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, Redeemer of all creation, you made the world in beauty, yet too often it is filled with ugly realities. We trust that you are at work in all situations, <clears throat> restoring and renewing all things. On this day, we find the courage of Jesus inspiring. So we pray that those in need will find such courage in the challenges they face. Hear us as we bring to you our concerns and send your redeeming power to touch our lives and your world once more. Wherever people are oppressed by the powers of poverty, sickness, or grief, ease their pain and restore them to wholeness. Wherever people challenge regimes or systems marked by tyranny, and brutality, encourage them in your spirit and lead them to liberty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wherever people are burdened by the weight of hostility, greed, or jealousy, restore their strength to resist and show them signs of hope. Wherever people are persecuted because of race or creed or for the truth they tell, let your truth and justice prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Wherever the earth cries out because people consume too much and ignore the danger signs, wherever care for the ground and water, for the endangered climate, an endangered species defies human carelessness. Let your love for the goodness of creation move the hearts of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church in every place, whether it be fragile or strong, tired or energized. Inspire us with your Holy Spirit to offer ourselves in gratitude for the gift of Jesus Christ, serving creativity and courageously in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray to you in silence for those situations close to our hearts. In your grace and love, restore all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love, infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you, God, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done. 
We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, may the peace and the joy of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Go into your week knowing that you are loved perfectly, saved eternally and empowered as a follower of Jesus to share God's love with everyone you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love. Serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord.